Are the Honourable Member for Dartmouth Cole Harbour. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased, uh, pleased to participate uh, for a few moments in this debate. Uh, I've got 10 minutes um, and I have a lot to say, so, so let me begin. I'm, uh, I'm going to be, uh, be hosting a town hall in Dartmouth on uh, Thursday evening from 6.30 to 8 um, to, uh, uh, to talk about these, uh, these cuts. And I'm, uh, I'm pleased to have a go at it tonight because when I have a town hall, I let uh, my constituents do the talking and, instead of taking up a time myself. Um, so, uh, so I'm pleased to be here to talk about uh, this motion and to talk in support of home delivery um, to uh, by Canada Post to Canadians. You know, I've been listening... I've been listening to the debate all day and to members opposite uh, trying to explain why it is that, uh, that they're moving in this direction and I still don't have a clear answer. Now, let's be clear, they sound like they know what they're talking about. This government has it down pat in terms of cutting services, whether it's services to veterans, closing down, uh, closing down offices, closing down services to, uh, to fishermen, closing down services for people on, I, on EI, whether it's closing down libraries, uh, whether it's making sure that, uh, or not making sure that military families, uh, that, uh, uh, that veterans, that uh, military personnel who need services can't de get them, this government is real good at closing down services. But the question that I ask is, if they're so smart and they're so sure of themselves in terms of their explanation, their arguments for this, why did they announce the decision in the dead of night? Why did they announce the decision the day after Parliament closed, when there was no one watching, when there was no one listening, uh, Mr. Speaker, when there was no one to question, to try to hold them accountable, to try to get some of those answers? There wasn't a minister in sight. There wasn't an executive from Canada Post in sight when Canadians began to get wind of what this government had announced and began to demand answers. It's just simply not good enough. I was talking to, I was talking to Carl today, a, a, a man from Dartmouth. He's 88. He said he just got off the phone from his sister who lives out in the country down near Lunenburg. She's his younger sister. She's 87. And he's upset about this because he said it's going to be difficult for him to access the mail in weather like this and weather that we've had throughout the winter. He said his sister has gone days, if not weeks, trying to access her mailbox in the country or community mailbox. I had a call from Sue the other day, uh, Mr. Speaker, and she said that there have been times over this, over this, uh, over this winter where she's gone number of days not being able to get into her mailbox because of the ice and snow. Why is it that this government, on this and so many other issues, are not prepared to consult with Canadians, are not prepared to consult with Carl and Sue and so many of the, of the people in Dartmouth that are going to see the service cut? Why aren't they prepared to come to the town hall at the at the Woodlawn United Church on Thursday night with me and, and hear what it is that people have to say. People are concerned about the fact they're not going to be able to access, uh, they're, they're not going to be able to get the, the service that they, uh, that they normally get. And you know, you hear government members say, well, you know, there's all these other Canadians that don't get door-to-door -door service anymore that depend on community mailboxes. Well, we fought against that because we believe that was wrong too. Two wrongs don't make a right, Mr. Speaker. This government has got to start figuring out how it is they're going to provide services to Canadians. How it is they're going to be able to make Canadians' lives better. How they're going to be able to make Canadian families' lives more affordable instead of always finding ways to cut back services, Mr. Speaker. In terms of the whole issue of expanding services of Canada Post, that they can start making money, the issue of postal banking, this government should be examining those kinds of options. 
They should be able to come here in this house and tell us that they're going to expand these services. They're going to ensure that Canada Post is going to be able to try these kinds of options like they have in other G7 countries. I have the Honourable Member for Essex. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate I listened to the uh, member's intervention, and I particularly on the, uh, I want to move to the issue of postal banking. I've been asking a number of questions on that here today. We find out whether the member supports postal banking without having the facts, or whether, in fact, he has the facts, and that's why he supports postal banking. My question is very simple. What would it cost Canada Post to capitalize a postal bank? What would it cost Canada Post to operate a postal brand, all those postal branches as banks? And how much, uh, and how does he expect Canada Post to be able to pay uh, for that initiative? We'll find out whether he has the facts about postal banking or whether it's ideology. Honourable Member for Dartmouth Cole Harbour. Mr. Speaker, I don't know what the member over there is, if he's a Minister of State or Parliamentary Secretary, but he has a title and he's responsible for this file for Canada Post. And he makes a bit of a stipend for that. I don't know what it is, 30, 40,000, not that it necessarily makes any difference, but this is his file. Canada Post has just announced that they're going to cut services to Canadians and that they've examined options, but the Parliamentary Secretary or the Minister of State, whatever that member is, he doesn't know what those options are. He doesn't know what the costs are. He doesn't know what the implications are for Canada Post. What's he doing? So the question is, what is the... Uh, what is the, uh, the CEO who's making a half, a half a million dollars? What's he doing over there? What's he doing over there to ensure that Canadians receive the services the Canada Post had mandated to provide? What is it he's doing? Is he examining the alternatives that other G7 countries around the world have examined and have successfully implemented in order to make sure that their postal services are viable? Or has he been sitting on his hands trying to trying to lecture seniors that they should be using this opportunity to go get some exercise. I think that's wrong.